Hello and welcome back to another episode of Aviation Tutorial. I'm your host Timmy Ulysses with Alpha Gamer on YouTube and today we'll be talking about target distancing and measurement units. If you haven't watched any of my latest tutorial episodes, there will be a playlist of footages in the description. If you are experienced at the game or have played it for quite a long time, please join us as we embark on teaching new players how to play the game. So, let's begin with the episode, shall we? Before I start off the episode first, I want to apologize for the lack of War Thunder Aviation tutorial content. Um, I wanted to say right off the bat, I've been kind of lazy since my uh, last episode I, I posted on YouTube. And of course, the only excuse I can give is just the laziness to do a lot of work. and. Yeah. Um, I hope I continue doing the sooner of the episode, provide more tips and everything. But so far, it's going to drop this with my <laughs> explanation. But I'm not going to progress any further about it. So let's get on with the episode, shall we? Okay, so to begin with how to change your settings around and for the game. Where preference you're from, you go to the options section and go all the way down to the measurement units as you've seen above uh, in temperature, climate speed, distance, altitude, and speed have their own different set of uh, categories you can choose from. Um, they all calculated differently by their math, depending on the metric systems and how they're converted S as. Um, Kilometers and miles are not the same, with temperature and Celsius being not the same exact. So you have to play around with understanding, and as you can see, with speed, you got miles per hour to kilometers per second for hours, distance, miles to kilometers, um, climb speed up to a feet per minute to meter per second, temperatures to Fahrenheit to uh, Celsius. Surprisingly, they don't have any fucking Kelvin, which is more mind-boggling because that's astronomy stuff. But other than that, it is. That's where you find the stuff into options. Now, since we got that out of the way, let's talk about the difference in target and distancing in um, realistic battles, simulated battles, and arcade battles. Would relatively be all the same, but. In different cases, since you're using different metric systems, like your kilometers per hour, your feet per second, Celsius, Fahrenheit, kilometers, mileage, or feet, depending on how you want to create your damn system, um, you have to set your gun conversions, which is from the previous episode I showed you, and work around, tweak it around to how you can effectively. Um, form in your gameplay a lot better. Now everybody's gameplay is different. You can choose from whatever you want to do. I'll show you a few things into my gameplay that are easier for me that may be different for you or it can be easier for you to apply for. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. A full disclaimer real quick that if you don't hear any of the uh, background uh, video game noise like the gunfire, the engine, everything. That's because they, I also have some um, rough draft videos of me talking and explaining these things at a very low voice. It is like fucking late at night and my parents are sleeping. And yes, I do live with my parents for the time being. And yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and continue on further, sorry. Today we'll be flying the P-51D5. In this first um, scene, I want to tell you all about your target distancing and, of course, your measurements of your mileage and everything. As you can see on to the top left, you got your, of course, throttle, the IAS, which is your miles per hour, altitude, your ammunition, of course, bomb loadage, your fuel time, oil, water. That's it. Now, you have the IAS being set to either kilometers per hour or miles 
per hour. Your fuel time is just fuel time. Oil and water are set to different temperatures that is seen appropriate um, in calculations that is Fahrenheit or Celsius. Fahrenheit, if I'm correct, is more uh, in Celsius. If it's Celsius, like about 38 degrees, it should be about like close to 99 or 100 degrees Fahrenheit from a rough calculation. So yeah, when you calculate these things, it's a lot different because everyone around the fucking world metrics and imperial metrics, I believe that's what they're called, are different from each other's fucking Europeans. Whatever. <laughs> but anyways, that is how you calculate um, temperatures. If you're talking about uh, miles, like miles per hour, kilometers per hour, uh, miles per hour, if it's one mile, it'll be like 1.60 kilometers per hour. That's the difference in the uh, distance where you're at. Let's say if, if I'm in a close quarter combat with another player and I am going head to head, it, which is head on action, if they're coming at me at like 0.5 five miles per hour to kilometers are 0.8 so you only half um, 1.6 from one mile half it down to 0.8 you're gonna be going on to your head-on collision of course that's what why you see a distance parameter of kilometers and mileage and when you see your target silhouette and everything come closer of course common sense but Let's say if you want to set your convergence, you have to have your, let me see, miles to kilometers. One meter requires 0 0.001 kilometers. Five meters would be 0 0.005 kilometers. Even though that may not make much sense, you have to uh, go to, let's say, test battles to see first which settings you like to go at and try to adjust them from the distance you are trying to intercept your target. When you make the correct calculation and the correct parameters for everything, you'll be able to get your um, bullet convergence at a good point and to get your target to a better damage. And more damage, the more deadly, deader they are in some non-term sense. So, like I said, you have to play around with these tools that appeals to you the most. And the more you practice with these things at a lower BR, that's what I suggest by the way, the better you will be at the game. And yeah, that's one of my suggested recommendations for all you newcomers to play. I have made a mention earlier about the three different uh, modes, your simulator mode, realistic modes, and arcade modes. I have not practiced simulator um, mode recently. I think it's more complex than, you know, the rest of the stuff because of controls. In realistic battles and arcade battles, so I will say, however, that arcade there's this little thing called um, target, um, target help, I guess you could say, or aim assist, whatever you can call in your fucking gameplay. That only applies in arcade mode, only. In realistic battles, you don't have that assistance. So you have to play a bunch of games to understand where to lead your targets, which is why I made in a previous episode of gun convergence and everything to make sure you have everything set right and that you're not gonna burn your ammunition like a fucking retard and be left in the dirt, you know. So yeah, it is very, very crucial that you pay attention to these things. And that's gonna make players like Niffin or Fly Daily or um any other fucking veterans in the game to look down on you like, what the fuck are you doing? You fucking retard. 
and I say this as fact, okay? Just be careful, okay, man? But other than that, I'm gonna explain real quick of the difference between prop BR and Jets BR. They may have the same statistics in everything, but in reality, they do not. In Jets BR, if you are playing in, of course, your very first jet, like the F-80, the ME-262, the uh, Meteor, um, the R2Y2, Kika, what else, the A-32s, I think, that's the sweetest uh, jets, um, the Venom, in other cases too, you have to understand that when you progress into a new um, era, I would say correctly, era meaning that you no longer have to deal with props, uh, well, kinda, props as in um, trying to turn fight and everything. You're gonna be dealing with jets that's gonna be doing boom and zoom constantly. Unless, of course, if you can do a, a proper dogfight dueling like what you're going to see right now. Now, what I'm getting at here with correlating with these things from measurement units, target distancing with just BR is that head-ons um, will be constant in, the, in this BR. You will be uh, burning a lot of speed, which I will assume you will probably understand, and that you have to make sure that your um, fuel time is set at a very good time frame. Meaning, if you run out of fuel, you're fucking dead in water. But other than that, um, the only thing, the main thing you gotta focus on in your um, measurement units or pretty much anything is your speed. Speed is the most important factor to focus on because if you're going at about maybe 700 kilometers in let's say an F80 for example which roughly would be about maybe 350 or 400 miles per hour or something if you pull too hard in a fucking um uh, in the air you gotta fucking rip your wings off quite easily and that goes the same thing with subsonic and supersonic jets so yes keep that in mind that these things change when you progress further and further in the game. Another thing to note in just BR are the missiles. And I say missiles are also another concern into this video because of how far away you launch your missiles at your target. As you can see right now, I'm using radar lock on a target, which is the AM. Uh, 7 E2s, uh, Sparrows. Now, these missiles will lock on, depending on how fucking uh, versatile and um, compliant they are. But as you can see, I got a successful lock on to the other uh, little Mirage, and boom, he's dead. Now, I say that the missiles are, that you can make sense as a difference, because you have to go to the target at close distance and make your launch um, happen. That way they don't lose their source and you're not having them a explode at the delayed time. When you launch it at a correct distance and by doing so you have to go to of course your secondary armament and look to the category of what the missiles are, what the statistics are, at what the lock-on range is and what the distance it is to um, fire your missile at to get that good reading and make sure you get your target of course but they all have the different preferences IR is your infrared um, lock-on which is when you shoot your missile normally when it locks on on a heat source like your thruster and everything afterburners radar lock of course locks on with the radar which you've seen earlier Right now, see how that missile locked onto me? That's radar. Kind of, I, don't, I think it's radar. So I was easy to avoid it because it locked onto my flares. 
but as you can see on to mine, when I'm going to throw out a AM9J Sidewinder, the, the circular uh, circumference of the lock is the distance of everything. So as you can see right now, it locks on, so you can see my bullshit, and he evades it, and plus add some flares to the mix. So that makes it as a way to evade your missile, which I will explain in a future video, of course. And yeah, it, it's a lot of it's a different thing you gotta learn from in Jet VR. It's gonna be a little confusing, but once you play more into it, you will understand. That part was bullshit. I wonder if Heidi missed that, but whatever, what that is. Alrighty, folks, this uh, concludes the basic and coverage of today's episode. I hope you all enjoy and have received new knowledge on how to play air battles better. If you wish to receive more content on aviation tutorials or wish to see other videos, feel free to subscribe. I will be making more in the future until it is deemed completed. If you're an experienced or a veteran at the game, again please leave an opinion or expertise in the comments below that you believe would be helpful. But other than that, guys and girls, thank you so much for your friends.